Hello? Hi, it's me. Hey girl. Um, so like 10 of my friends are coming over and we're gonna have dinner, so you wanna come? Oh, actually, uh, no, because it's a pandemic and you know, I'm having fun, I guess, isolating by myself. Uh, so I guess that's why we haven't seen each other in like a year. Well, you have to eat something. Like, what are you even gonna eat for dinner? My friend made this tofu dish the other day. I think I'm gonna try it. It's like tofu and a bunch of veggies. Are you trying to get breast cancer? Or, you know, is your friend trying to poison you? Tofu equals soy equals breast cancer. Everyone knows that. You need to throw out that toxic poison right away. I mean, whoever even sent that to you is literally trying to poison you. Is that actually true? Hey guys, Kritika here, registered dietitian, and today we're gonna look into the really controversial topic of the soybean. So this video will simply be an interpretation of the research, not my opinions or feelings. So that I'm giving you the best, most accurate information because as always, that's my goal on my channel. Oh wait, do you eat that toxic poison sh I want to emphasize that when we make nutrition recommendations to the public as health professionals, it's not based on what we do or don't do. My recommendations come from the evidence and the research on that topic, which often do coincide with what I do, but it's all about the research and the science first. But if you stay till the end of this video, I will share what I personally do if you find that interesting. Ugh, fine, whatever. So first, let's take a look at what soy actually is and where it's found. Soy comes from the soybean, which is a legume. Or legume? Do you say legume or legume? Facts about soy. It's high in protein, it's high in fiber. Some examples of soy foods would be edamame, tofu, tempeh, miso, soy milk. Protein powders also sometimes contain soy as well as meat alternatives or mock meats. Another fact about soy is that soy protein has been shown to increase the amount of beneficial bacteria in our gut due to the fiber content, the oligosaccharides, and the isoflavones. Isoflavins, isoflavones, isoflavins. My ex-best friend's husband's mom cousin said that she doesn't eat soy because her doctor's sister, who is also a doctor, says it causes cancer. This one study is from 1998 and in mice, it stimulated the growth of existing tumors. However, since the study was done, scientists have found out that the way that rodents metabolize isoflavins is a lot different than the way us humans metabolize it. Rodent metabolism actually leads to a lot higher of a level of the isoflavins in their bodies. So here's what happens in the human body. Isoflavins have a very similar chemical makeup to estrogen. Therefore, these isoflavins can bind to estrogen receptors in our bodies. However, unlike estrogen, soy isoflavins have a preference to bind to this receptor and not this receptor. This is important because these estrogen receptors exert different and sometimes opposite effects in our bodies. Basically, what this all means is that soy can sometimes have the opposite effect of estrogen and can possibly reduce our risk for breast cancer. And there are three meta-analyses, which I'm just gonna list here on the screen and I'll link it down below, from 2008, 2011, and 2019, which all actually showed that consuming soy actually protects against breast cancer. However, these results were only significant in Asian populations. And here's some more tea for you. Soy may actually reduce our cancer risk in some people more than others due to like genetic differences, as well as differences in our gut bacteria. And of course, this is gonna be different for everyone, but about 30% of the Western population, 65% of Asian populations, have gut bacteria that are able to produce this compound called equal. Those that produce this compound may particularly benefit from soy's effects of the protection against breast cancer. What? Nobody understands your jargon. Basically, in some people with certain genetic makeup and certain gut bacteria profiles, it, soy may actually protect against breast cancer, but in others, it just doesn't do anything. So if you're not a rodent, then soy doesn't cause breast cancer? Exactly. This study took almost 2,000 breast cancer survivors, followed them for six years, and asked them in a food frequency questionnaire how much soy they were consuming and whether this affected their recurrence of breast cancer. What they found was a decrease in breast cancer recurrence the more soy that was consumed. This was especially true for the small amount of Asian women who were on tamoxifen, which is a breast cancer treatment within the study. But some notes about the study, of course, it's an observational study, so we can't conclude that there was a cause and effect here. Like we can't say 
just because these these women consumed like lots of soy and they had a decreased risk of breast cancer that it was the soy itself that caused the decreased risk in breast cancer could it be that maybe they were also following a lot of healthy lifestyle strategies that we know pr protect against cancer but the study was interesting because it showed us that consuming lots of soy did not influence their risk of breast cancer in the future it's just interesting to see that there was a decrease in cancer risk the more soy that was consumed. Let's look at this more recent 2013 review article that looked at both observational data and randomized control trials. And remember, randomized control trials are really important because they can show us cause and effect. When we look at the randomized control trials, most of them found no impact at all on our estrogen and the others found actually a decrease in estrogen levels. The conclusion of this study was that there is no evidence prior to 2013, because that's when the study was done, that shows that soy increases our risk for breast cancer or breast cancer recurrence if you've already had it. And soy may actually protect against breast cancer, although that part is only based on the observational data. So soy doesn't cause cancer? Actually, no, not at all. And we can say that with confidence based on the research. What's less clear is whether soy is actually protective. Do soy protein isolates, like the ones that we find in protein powders and protein bars, have a different effect? Do soy supplements taken in capsule form have a different effect? Do we need to worry about that? One study from 2014 tried to answer this question and they gave women these capsules of concentrated soy protein isoflavins. And the study found that soy isoflavin supplementation in premenopausal women at high risk of breast cancer, stimulated breast cancer cell growth over the course of six months. The evidence for concentrated soy isoflavin supplements on breast cancer risk and recurrence is, is inconsistent, it's variable. Some studies show that there is a negative effect, some studies don't show anything. That's why I wouldn't recommend using uh, concentrated soy protein isoflavin supplements. It could be possible that you could be eating so much of these like protein bars and these other foods that you could be getting an extremely large amount of isoflavins, which wouldn't be so good. But I think if you're doing that, we need to probably look at your diet in entirety and look at what foods those are displacing. Are they displacing fruits and vegetables, which we know are so good for us? And that's what I would be more concerned about than the small amounts of soy protein isolate present in these foods. Anyways, keep watching. Health authorities like the National Cancer Institute say that about three servings a day is totally safe, not lead to an increased risk in breast cancer. Well, I would still never eat soy. <sighs> I'm gonna go get some edamame. That was a lot of research. And if you've made it this far in the video, comment the fire emoji. Of course, the majority of the time you wanna stick to these like whole soy foods, tofu, tempeh, edamame, soy milk. We don't want these protein bars or other like these packaged foods and supplements to replace fruits and vegetables, which are protective. And as far as my opinion and my personal diet, I do eat soy and I do eat uh, tofu. I eat edamame, I have tempeh. I also sometimes have like mock meats that contain soy, but I do not consume any uh, protein bars at all. I guess I just really haven't thought about eating protein bars lately. I just prefer eating like a meal or like, you know, like a hearty snack. It's just more satisfying to me. I actually drink soy milk more often than any other like plant-based milk because of the protein in it. But I almost never have almond or cashew because there's barely any protein in milk. I am not afraid that I'm gonna get breast cancer because I'm eating these soy foods because of the research that we have on this. And I don't take any like soy supplements or anything. That's just unnecessary. I have a special announcement to make and I'm still kind of speechless that this even happened, but I have filmed a collab video with a YouTube creator that I have admired for a very long time. And she invited me on her channel in one of her videos. This was honestly like a dream come true. I just wanted to let you guys know because I don't have any other way of letting you know um, because I don't have like that community tab where you can like talk to your subscribers. But that video is gonna be out on her channel. It should be a really fun and informative one. And I'm gonna keep everyone updated on when that video will be out and everything on Instagram because it's gonna be on her channel. So definitely follow me on Instagram so you can find out who it was with and you can watch the video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Stay happy and healthy and I'll see you later. Bye.